This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. All right, well, I hope you downloaded the uh, free lecture notes because uh, this lecture, uh, I'm going to go through the, the first chapter, which is Introduction to Accounting. Uh, and it's only a brief introduction, it's a fairly short chapter, no, no numbers involved. Uh, but let's have a, a, a short chat before we do actually start going through um, all the, the proper numbers. Anyway, on the first page you'll see uh, it says definition of accounting. Now it's not a question here of learning a definition, uh, but we're aware in financial accounting there are really two things involved. Uh, one is recording, in that every time a business has a transaction, we need to make a record of that transaction. You know, any business will be buying goods, it'll be selling goods. Uh, lots and lots of transactions every day. Well, every transaction we do need a record of. So that's part of the problem. Uh, and again, how we do the recording, I'll deal with in all the later chapters. Uh, but the second thing is summarising. Uh, that at the end of the accounting uh, period, uh, at the end of the year, uh, we're required to produce various statements. For instance, a statement of profit and loss, uh, where we, we're showing how much profit the business has made. And so on that statement, we'll want to show the total sales, the total purchases. We're not going to list every single sale, there'll be thousands of individual sales. We'll have recorded every time we've sold goods. But at the end of the year, we need to summarise. We need to show the total of what we've sold, the total of what we've bought, and so on. And we produce these uh, what, two main statements. Uh, a statement of profit or loss, showing how much profit or loss that we've made. Uh, and the statement of financial position, which some of you may have heard of as the balance sheet, but we now call it statement of financial position. Uh, but again, as you'll see in the next chapter, this is really just a summary of what the business owns and what the business owes. Uh, but again, I'm going to go through all the detail in the later chapters. How we go about recording every transaction and how at the end of the period we produce our financial statements. Over the page it says types of business entity. And there are two main types that you need to be aware of. First of all, a sole trader. And what a sole trader is, it's one person in business on their own. Nothing to do with limited companies or anything, whether you've heard of them or you haven't. It's one person in business on their own. So, you know, there's nothing to stop me renting a, a stall in the market and buying and selling DVDs. Buy them. Just go along, buy a load of DVDs, rent this stall, sell them. And of course, I hope to make a profit. Uh, and obviously any profit will belong to me. But what's important about a sole trader is as far as the law is concerned, I am the business. And if the business collapses owing money, uh, and there's not enough money in the business to pay the bills, it's me who's got to pay the bills. If, if that involves me selling my car, selling my house and so on, so be it. But the owner has what we call unlimited liability. I personally am responsible for everything the business does. I'm personally responsible for everything the business owes. Uh, the other type of business is a limited liability company. Uh, 
And here, it's several people in business together So maybe 10 of us decide we're going to start a business going and actually all put in $100 and the business um, can start buying a shop or something. Uh, but the important thing about a limited liability company is the business exists separately in law. The company uh, registers with the state. It exists completely separately from the owners. Uh, and there are laws that apply to the business. Uh, the business pays tax and so on. So it exists separately. Any profits, fine, belong to the owners. But what's so important is the owners have limited liability. And what this means is that if the business uh, collapses and it can't pay its bills, as an owner, this time I'm not responsible. The most I can lose is the money that I've put into the business. So if I put in a hundred dollars as my share of uh, the money the business needed, then fine, that's the most I can lose, even if the business collapses owing millions. And because of that, there are lots of laws relating to uh, limited companies. Uh, but this isn't a law exam. Uh, I'm not really interested in the, the detailed law. Uh, in the UK, a limited company uh, we either put the letters LTD after the company's name, if it's a small business. Uh, if it's a big business, um, quoted on the stock exchange, we put the letters PLC. LTD stands for limited, PLC is public limited company. <coughs> Again, this isn't a law exam, and you won't be tested on the uh, words. Uh, but if ever you see in a question mention of X LTD or X PLC, uh, it simply means it's a limited company. Uh, you'll also see mention on that page of partnerships. Uh, now you can't be tested directly on partnerships, but just be aware of what they are. Uh, a straight partnership is just like a sole trader, except there are two or more people. In business together. So maybe two of us decide to form. Um, to rent a stall and sell uh, DVDs on the market. But there are two of us. So we'll both put in some money. And any profits we'll share between us. But. As I say, it's just like a sole trader, but with two or more people. The owners have unlimited liability. Now, in fact, to complicate things, these days you can have limited partnerships, which are effectively limited companies, uh, but I'm not terribly interested I uh, say so you're not going to be tested directly on that partnerships. What we're concerned with is sole traders and limited companies. Uh, and in fact, most of what we do, the recording certainly is the same for both. Makes no difference. Uh, it's simply a limited liability company. There are a few more rules with regard particularly to the layout of statements. But again, this is just introductory. I'll deal with all of that later. Uh, final thing on that page, uh, it says in all cases we apply the separate entity concept that despite the fact that a sole trader, the business is me. You know, everything in the business belongs to me, if every, everything the business owes, I owe. Despite that, 
when we come to do our recording and produce statements, we always look at the business as though it is separate from the owner. Over the page, users of accounting information, I keep mentioning these statements. Again, even though we've not gone through them yet, a statement showing how much profit or loss we've made, I think it should be fairly obvious, the idea. Uh, but many people are interested in um, these statements. Obviously, management are. It's their job to run the business and hopefully make a profit. I think obviously the owners or shareholders, it's a limited company, they're interested. I'm interested in how much profit my business is making. I'm interested in what my business is worth. Now, potential investors, if you're thinking of putting money into my business, I think you'll want to know how well my business is doing. Lenders, if I go to the bank to uh, borrow money, uh, the bank obviously is going to want to know first how well or badly the business is doing. Employees, wherever you work, if the business is uh, making lots of money, you'll be hoping you're going to get a pay rise. If the business is losing money, you might be scared for your job. Uh, the government, several reasons, but mainly, of course, they're interested because they're going to get tax uh, from you. And the general public, you tend to be interested in certain companies. And, you know, are they doing well or aren't they? Uh, finally, you'll see on the last page a comparison between financial accounting and management accounting. And although for this paper it's financial accounting we're concerned about, uh, do be aware what we mean by management accounting and what the main differences are between the two. Sorry, I'm sort of setting up the same table that there is in the notes. Um, Sorry, I pause because uh, normally it's the same people doing both sets of work, management accounts, financial accounts, but there really are two separate things involved. What management accounts are, uh, are accounts that are usually prepared monthly or statements to help managers run the business. And so the purpose The purpose of management accounts is to help managers run the business. Uh, whereas financial accounts, you know, it's hard for me to say everything at once here, I'm going to write several things down, but financial accounts the state requires accounts once a year uh, to give information to those users I mentioned on the previous page. They're required by law. Once a year. Now that leads in directly to um, at the timing. Um, management accounts, most businesses, it's not a rule, but most businesses uh, once a month will prepare certainly profit statements to show how well we're doing. Uh, once a month, I beg your pardon, I think I said once a year. Now uh, they'll generally prepare statements once a month because managers want to know, you know, if in January things are going wrong, they want to know in January, then they can try and sort out the problem for February. So management accounts are usually prepared monthly. But I've already said, financial accounts, the law requires them once a year. Uh, which fits in, again, I'm repeating when I'm trying to fill in the whole picture. As far as the law is concerned, or the requirement, I've already said financial accounts, they are required by law. Uh, 
management accounts, these monthly accounts, there's no legal requirement to produce them. Not every company does. Most do, but only because it's helping the managers. They are not required by law. Uh, two more things. Another thing is the layout of these. Financial accounts, there are laws telling us what the statements must look like. There are what we call international accounting financial reporting uh, standards, saying how we must present these statements. Again, the layout is required by law. And, I'll write IFRS, is International Financial Reporting Standards, but uh, I'll explain what they are again in a later chapter. Uh, with management accounts, there's no rules. It's whatever layout we find useful. And finally, the reporting, uh, who's using these statements. Uh, well, the management accounts are only used internally. They're internal. They're used by the managers. Uh, nobody else can see them. You know, it's nobody else's business. They're prepared month by month to help the managers run the business better. Whereas the financial accounts, it's what we call external reporting, in that these accounts will get, the management will see them obviously, but they'll get sent to the owner's shareholders, all the people listed on the previous page. They'll be able to see these accounts, they're publicly available. Now, if I say don't go learning all of that, um, we're not really concerned, or we're not concerned at all uh, in the rest of um, these notes with management accounting. We are concerned with financial accounting, how we're required to record transactions, how we're required to produce these statements. Management accounting, we're not interested in at all. I don't know what other exams you've done so far, but you're examining on that separately. But do be aware, they are two separate things, even though it may be the same accountants that are involved. OK, well, that's the end of that. Uh, in the following lectures, we'll start going through how we go about recording these transactions, what these statements are, and how we go about preparing them. Good.